Hello friends, this video on sound part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us see what exactly happens at the eardrum. Now just take this example. So this example will help you to understand what happens at the eardrum. So let us suppose you have a, a can. So such that you have removed the top and the bottom of the can. So it is just a cylinder which is open from top as well as bottom. Now you take a rubber, a rubber kind of a stretchable substance and you cover the top of this can. Maybe with a rubber band you just tie it up so that it, it, it that's stretched. So it is like a stretched membrane now. Now you keep few uh, grain seeds here, small grains you keep it here. Now what do you do? This side is open. Now you speak something on this side and what happens? The sound waves reach this membrane. Now this membrane being a stretched membrane, what happens? It starts vibrating. And how do you know it is vibrating? Because these grains, they start jumping. So they, they also start vibrating along with the membrane. So this shows that when sound waves reach a stretched membrane, the stretched membrane starts vibrating and a similar thing happens in case of eardrum also. When the sound waves reach the eardrum, eardrum starts to vibrate. Now what happens due to this vibration? Now due to the vibration of the eardrum, what happens is these vibration means these kind of compressions and rarefaction will happen. Compressions are these dense areas, rarefactions are less dense areas. Again compressions are more dense areas, rarefactions are less dense areas. So this is what I was telling you in one of the previous slides, right? So the, this wave like structure is being formed. So that is how you get the sound waves. That is how your ear perceives the sound waves. So vibration of the eardrum is the most important thing that happens during the process of hearing. Now, your eardrum started vibrating and that is how you your ear got the uh, frequency and the characteristics of the sound wave. Now, how will it enter into the inner ear? So, then comes the middle ear. Next is middle ear. So, the middle ear will receive the vibrations of the eardrum and what will it do? It will just amplify the vibrations because the vibrations will be like, it is not that it starts moving just like this. So the vibrations are going to be very like uh, less noticeable. So those vibrations get amplified by the middle ear and in middle ear we have three bones which help in this amplification and what are the three bones? Malleus, incus and stapes. So these three bones which are also called as hammer, anvil and stirrup. So these three bones together form the middle ear and they together help in the amplification of the eardrum vibrations. Now once the vibrations are amplified, then they reach the inner ear. So here the vibrations get amplified and then they reach the inner ear which is also called cochlea. So cochlea is this uh, coiled structure which you see here. That is the most important part of the inner ear and in this part the vibrations are converted into electrical signals because the vibrations alone are not going to help you. The vibrations need to be sent to the brain so that the brain can interpret what you are hearing and send it back to you. So how do you send those uh, sound waves to the brain so you cannot send it as it is so the vibrations need to be converted into some electrical signals with the help of your nerves and then the nerves will carry these signals to the brain and then the brain will respond back and that's how you will be able to understand what you heard so that's how it works so these conversion into electrical signals take place in the inner ear and then with the help of the auditory nerve it is sent to the brain so that is how the entire process of hearing takes. So we saw how important ear is. Without ear functioning properly, we will not be able to hear anything, any of the sounds which are being produced around us. So therefore, it is extremely important that this sensitive organ is well protected. So what are some of the things that we can take care in order to ensure that the ear is well protected? One such thing is don't listen to music too loud for too long because if the music is very loud, what happens is those sound waves, they are directly hitting the eardrum of the ear. So there are chances that the eardrum might get adversely impacted. Prefer muff type 
headphones over earbuds style ones. Now you would have seen that there are two types of headphones available these days. One is the muff type ones, the one which you see on the screen. So these are called the muff type headphones. So they are safer because they are not in direct contact with your eardrum. Whereas there are other type of headphones which are like you do not have this entire band. You have small uh, things which can be inserted inside the ear. So they are they should be less preferred because they are like in direct touch with your eardrum. Do not use sharp and hard objects like pin to clean your ear. Like it, it's a common habit for a lot of people to use these kind of sharp and hard objects to clean the ear. And that's how they go in direct contact with the eardrum and they can very easily damage the eardrum. In fact, they can actually uh, cause some problem to the eardrum. So you should always try to use the soft buds to clean your ear because the tip is quite soft. So even though it comes in touch with your uh, eardrum, it doesn't harm it or it doesn't uh, cause any sort of breakage to the membrane of the eardrum. So these are some of the things which should be kept in mind in order to ensure that the eardrum is well protected. Okay, so by now what all did we learn about sound? How is sound produced? How sound propagates? And how do we hear sounds? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.